Hello and welcome to another video on sequences. Uh, in the previous video, I introduced you to the idea of a few different types of sequences. We looked at arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences and quadratic sequences. And in this video, we're just going to focus on arithmetic sequences and we're going to look at trying to come up with a rule so we can find any term in an arithmetic sequence. So if we have a look at this sequence here, we can see that this is an arithmetic sequence because it goes up by the same amount each time. So in order to go from one term to the next, you can see that we just add two. So if this is our first term, we just do one times two, which gives us two. This is our second term, so we do two times two, which gives us four. This is our third term, so we do three times two. Fourth term, four times two, and fifth term, five times two. So let me just write that down. So here we've got the position number. So the first term, the second term, the third term, fourth term, and fifth term. And you can see that we're just multiplying our position by two to get our term. So one times two, two times two, three times two, four times two, and five times two. So we can say that in order to get any term in our sequence, we just multiply the position number by two. So for example, this sequence would just carry on. And if we wanted to work out the 10th term, we just do 10 times two, and that will give us 20. So the 20 will be the 10th term in our sequence. So we can write that out as a rule. So our rule is to get any term in our sequence, we just multiply the position number by two. So if we wanted to find the 20th term, we just do 20 times two, which gives us 40. If we wanted to find the 50th term, we just do 50 times two, which gives us 100. And if we wanted to find the 1000th term, we just do 1000 times two, and that gives us 2000. So it's a really quick way of finding any term in an arithmetic sequence. So let's have a look at another arithmetic sequence and see if we can come up with a rule to find any term in this sequence. So just like in the previous sequence, we're going up by two each time. So you could think about it as the two times table, we're going up by two each time, but notice the numbers have just been shifted slightly. So how much have they been shifted by? Well, if we do our two times table, we can just compare the sequence with our two times table to see how much they've been shifted up by. So this is our two times table and this is our sequence. And you can probably already see how much it's been shifted up by. So in order to go from two to seven, what number are we adding on? Well, we're adding on five. In order to go from four to nine, again, we're going to add on five. And notice how to go from six to 11, eight to 13, 10 to 15, we're always adding on five. So if we wanted to come up with a rule so we could find any term in the sequence, what could we say? Well, first of all, because it's similar to our two times table, we're going to multiply the position by two, and then we're going to add on five. So for each term, we're multiplying by two and then adding on five. Multiply by two, add on five. So the rule to find any term in our sequence, we multiply the position by two and then add five. So if we wanted to find the 10th term in our sequence, again, we multiply the position by two, so we'd do 10 times two, and then we add five. Similarly, to find the 20th term, we just do 20 times two, and then add on five, which gives us 45. And then finally, to work out the 50th term, we do 50 times two, and then add on five, and that gives us 105. So now it's your turn, have a go at trying to work out what the rule is to find any term in this sequence, and then write it down. And then using your rule, have a go at working out what the 10th term is, the 20th term, and the 50th term of your sequence. So let's go through this together now. So we know that this is an arithmetic sequence because it goes up by the same amount each time. So what does it go up by? Well, to go from seven to 11, we add on four. Similarly, to go from 11 to 15, we add on four. To go from 15 to 19, we add on four. And to go from 19 to 23, we also add on four. So we can say that it's similar to our four times tables because we're adding on four each time, but it's not quite our four times tables. These numbers have been shifted up slightly. So if we write down our four times table, we can see how much this has been shifted by. So now we can see that if this is our four times table and this is our sequence that we've got, how much has our sequence been shifted up by? Well, in order to go from four to seven, what have we done? Well, we've added on three. To go from eight to 11, again, we've added on three. 12 to 15, we've added three. 16 to 19, we've added three. And 20 to 23, we've added on three. 
So in order to create a rule to find any term in our sequence, because it's our four times table, we can just multiply our position by four and then we add on three. So now we've got our rule set out, multiply the position by four and then add three, we can calculate the 10th term, the 20th term and the 50th term. So the 10th term will be 10 times four plus three, which gives us 43. The 20th term will be 20 times four plus three. 20 times four is 80, 80 plus three is 83. And then the 50th term will be 50 times four, which is 200. And then plus three, that gives us 203. Okay, let's do a couple more. And again, pause the video and have a go at trying to first of all find the rule to find any term and then have a go at finding these terms in our sequence. Okay, so first of all, let's see what times table this is similar to. So it looks like we're going up by six here and it looks like we're going up by six each time. So it's similar to our six times tables, but it's just been shifted. So again, if we write down our six times tables, we'll be able to see how much it's been shifted by. So it looks like this time it's actually been shifted downwards, okay, because our sequence is smaller than our six times tables. So it looks like we're subtracting two here to go from six to four. To go from 12 to 10, we're subtracting two, and it looks like we're subtracting two each time. So our rule to find any term would be to first of all multiply the position by six because it's our six times tables and then subtract two. So now we've got our rule, let's work out these terms. So the 10th term will be 10 times six subtract two. 10 times six is 60, 60 subtract two, that will be 58. Our 20th term, that's just 20 times six minus two. 20 times 6 is 120, so that's going to be 118. And then our 50th term will be 50 times 6, which is 300, minus 2, and that gives us 298. Okay, let's do one more, and this time it involves negative numbers, so be really careful with this one, and have a go at doing it yourself. Okay, so let's go through this together now. So what am I doing to go from 2 to negative 1? Well, this time I'm going down, so I'm subtracting. So to go from two to negative one, I'm gonna be subtracting three. Likewise, to go from negative one to negative four, I'm subtracting three. Here, I'm also subtracting three, and here I'm also subtracting three. So you can think about this as similar to a negative three times table. Now, you don't really think about negative times tables, but that's what it's similar to. So if we write down our negative three times tables, what do we get? So this will be our negative three times table, and this is our sequence. So how much has our sequence been shifted by? Well, to go from negative three to two, it looks like we're adding on five. Now let's see if that's the same for these terms. Well, to go from negative six to negative one, well, yes, again, I'm adding on five. Negative nine to negative four, I'm adding on five. Negative 12 to negative seven, I'm adding on five. And finally, negative 15 to negative 10, Again, I'm adding on five. So we could think about our rule as because it's the negative three times table, we're gonna multiply our position by negative three and then add five. So again, to find the 10th term, we just do 10 and this time we're gonna multiply by negative three and then add five. So 10 times negative three, that's negative 30. And then if we add five, that's gonna give us negative 25. Our 20th term will be 20 times negative three and that gives us negative 60. When we add on five, that gives us negative 55. And finally, our 50th term would be 50 times negative three, which is a negative 150. Add on five, and that gives us negative 145. So hopefully you found that video useful, and hopefully it gave you an introduction into finding the rule to find any term in an arithmetic sequence. And usually there's two steps involved. The first step, is to multiply your position by some number and that number will just be the difference between each term and then secondly is just making that adjustment so either adding or subtracting a number to go from your times tables to your sequence now these rules that i've been writing out each time they're quite long so in the next video we're going to use algebra and condense this into something called the nth term which you might already be familiar with now the nth term is exactly the same as this so it's not really a step forward, but it's just writing this using algebraic notation, which is something that you should all get to know very well going forward. Okay, take care guys, thanks a lot.